Hey there, my name is Anthony Romano, and in this video I'm going to tell you why the ketogenic diet is the true limitless drug. So many people online look for nootropics or other brain boosting supplements, but at the end of the day, taking your nutrition by the horns is the best way to improve your brain. And a lot of people know keto for fat loss and getting in shape, but it's actually incredible for your brain. So listen to the arguments I'm going to put in this video, and I think it'll dramatically change the way you view boosting your mental and cognitive performance. So I've been doing the ketogenic diet for seven years. I've been coaching people with it helping out many people for free, making these videos, and doing it for bodybuilding. But I stick to it most of the time throughout the year just because I love the way I feel. And that's, funny enough, often the reason why people start getting so enthusiastic about keto overall. They get into it for weight loss or body composition, and they end up sticking with it because they just love the way they feel, mentally and physically. So, I'm gonna break down a lot of the arguments here of why keto is so effective at providing this limitless effect but keep in mind you have to get adapted on keto first so that's going to take around three to four weeks and those benefits will improve and stockpile upon one another as time goes on but i'm going to break down the main reasons why and i'm going to start off with the basics so starting off you are not eating carbs and you are not eating sugar on a ketogenic diet so many people don't really realize that when you have carbs or sugar of any kind whether it's fruits or whether it's a snickers bar your blood sugar and blood insulin are going to spike up and crash down all day long. And you're gonna be on this perpetual cycle of refueling with carbs. And that goes for even the quote unquote cleaner carbs like an apple. If you have a certain amount of sugar, whether it's from anything, it's going to affect your performance and your fatigue and your appetite and people are gonna get hangry. There's so many people talking about being hangry and hunger plus anger. And this is all a byproduct of volatile blood sugar and blood insulin and your body craving more of a quick hit of energy. Also, because of the way that sugar impacts your reward system in your brain, it makes you crave it all day long. So for starters, on keto, you don't have that. You just have stable blood sugar all day long and maybe little rises in your blood insulin and maybe a little rise in your blood glucose too, but nothing that's going to be dramatic. Just the appropriate amount that your body is going to make those sugars from excess proteins that you're eating. So overall, you're only gonna be getting minimal amounts of those and not much volatility. So again, the first three days are going to be hard. And after then, everything gets much easier, but all the benefits of this limitless lifestyle, limitless lifestyle are gonna come after you are adapted. So you're not having sugar. But also, many people don't know that sugar is an ineffective or the less efficient fuel for your brain. Of course, your brain needs a small amount of sugar every day, but it can easily make that through extra protein. And your brain, surprise, surprise, is made almost entirely of fat, particularly saturated fat. And there's a large amount of DHA, which is a type of fat in fish oil, like the omega-3 fish oils, that makes up a large component of your brain. It's funny because if you think about what people are trying to do, they're trying to lose fat. Well, why are we, trying to, why are we storing that fat in the first place? because it's your body's preferred energy. Your body prefers fat. That's why we store so much of it. And we only store such a small amount of carbohydrates in comparison to that. So overall, in grade nine science class, I always say this, your cell wall is made of fat. Every, body, every cell in your body is made of cholesterol and fat. And your brain is made almost entirely of fat. Your body stores plenty of extra fat, near endless amounts, because fat is our preferred energy. If sugar was our preferred energy, we would store dramatically more of it, but we don't. We store fat because it's better. And why is fat better? Well, for one gram of fat, you have nine calories. For one gram of carb, you have four. So a lot of people try to cut out fat because it's more dense in calories, but they don't realize that you can get more than double the energy from one gram of fat than you can with carbs. So your brain prefers this because it's a better fuel. It's the same thing with gasoline. The gas with the higher octane fuel is higher in energy per liter. Same thing with fat. So your brain prefers fat, and in evolution, we would have only needed a small amount of fat to thrive all day long. So fat is a better fuel source. Fat is the preferred fuel source of your brain and your body. 
and your cells. So let's start talking about cells more. Your mitochondria, which again, back to grade nine science, is the powerhouse of your cell. Everyone's heard that. Basically, it's the workhorse. And you can fuel your mitochondria better with ketones and fatty acids. So when you're running on a ketogenic metabolism and not sugar, you're going to be wasting, creating a lot less cellular waste and a lot less free radicals. Everything's going to be running smoother on a cellular level. I have a video on the Krebs cycle, which is the ATP production cycle uh, and the ketogenic metabolism on my YouTube page. But the thing is, when you are on a carb metabolism, you create more waste because you have to convert the carbohydrates into pyruvate before they can be converted into ATP. So basically, your mitochondria is create is doing more work and creating more waste when you're on a carb metabolism. So for all the biohackers out there, you are having a much smoother, more efficient process with a ketogenic metabolism. And if you know anything about biohacking, your mitochondria is the big, that's the center point of everything. If you can improve the mitochondria, you are improving everything. And that is also kind of an allusion to the Limitless movie because everything is running smooth, there's better recall, there's smoother speech. Everything associated with that is gonna come down to your mitochondria. So let's go down to the brain and the brain's mitochondria because your brain has a large amount of mitochondria in it. You create more and a better balance of the neurotransmitters GABA and glutamate when you are on a ketogenic diet. When you are on a carb metabolism, oftentimes your, your brain has to take sugar in little spurts and you'll create more GABA on a ketogenic diet. So overall, you're going to reduce all the glutamine that's going to be required okay and oftentimes sometimes when people are switching to a ketogenic diet what they do is it's a good idea to supplement with glutamine because glutamine can substitute for sugar certain functions that require sugar in your brain so realistically your brain was almost dependent on sugar in a certain way more when you run a carbohydrate metabolism your body will create more or sorry your brain will create more of glutamine and gaba and a better balance of the two when you're on a ketogenic metabolism so Last thing I'll say, I'll get into here is omega-3s. Omega-3s are so overlooked and people ask me about supplements all the time. Omega-3s are some of the supplements that I take all the time. EPA and DHA are the primary omega-3s, at least the ones that are worth supplementing. So when you have a large amount of DHA, this is going to be hugely beneficial for your brain. My personal favorite way to do it is actually through krill oil, but krill oil just has astaxanthin and phospholipids. So basically, a lot of beneficial compounds for your brain to make things easier. At the end of the day, as I was saying before, your brain runs on fat and there's a large, I believe 40% DHA in your brain. So, omega-3 is going to be much more prevalent in your diet on a ketogenic approach. You're gonna be eating fattier foods and presumably eating healthier cuts of, of fatty foods. So healthier organic animal foods. And this brings me into the last thing I'll say and wrap it up with is that you're not eating the kryptonite. This is perhaps the biggest thing because sometimes it's not about what you are eating. It's about what you're not eating and you're not eating the kryptonite at all. There's no sugar. There's no high fructose corn syrup. There's no MSG. You're not getting any gluten or wheat and minimal lectins depending on which grain products you were eating before. So these are all things that could disrupt your, of course, your brain function, but also your gut bacteria. And there's a great relationship between your brain and your gut. So in case you don't know, MSG and fructose and aspartame, well, MSG and aspartame are excitatory neurotoxins. So they will make your brain think certain food tastes better than it does. And these are commonly found in processed carb snacks. Conveniently, this is why you can't have more or just one of the Lay's potato chips. It, it physiologically makes you want more of a food. So overall, you're cutting these things out. You're cutting out this craving. This, you're cutting out things that you didn't even know you're addicted to. And for things like fructose or high fructose corn syrup, these are sugars that are very high in their density. So they're very high glycemic sugars. These sugars create such a reward response. And when you have large amounts of them, not only does it tax your liver, but at the same time, it's going to be messing with your brain because it's giving your brain this huge dopamine response like a drug. And it'd be the same as having a hit of a swig of alcohol all like periodically throughout the day, but just replace alcohol with carbs. So your mental performance is going to be dramatically smoother if not only you eat keto and give your body these brain foods, 
but at the same time, if you're cutting out the trash and cutting out these foods that are kryptonite for you. So if you're interested in more of these things, leave me some comments. I want to answer you. I want to get back to more of your biohacking and bodybuilding comments. And beyond this, go to my website, romanoketo.com for keto coaching. And thank you again for watching this video. Hopefully you learned something valuable. If you did, like it and subscribe to me right now. Peace. Oh,